Hey, hi, and hello once again. Sorry we got a little cut off there. My um, SD card decided to go. I'm full and shut off the camera. So I took about a 20 minute break and downloaded everything to the laptop here, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll now. So we're back to the neurologist. I go to the neurologist, nerve damage, nerve bundle, blah, blah, blah. Didn't go get surgery that I probably should have gotten. So, long story shorter, again, I fast forward to, what year was that, Amy? You thought you had your accident? No. That was like 2008, 2009. Yeah, when you had your accident, it was 2009. Um, oh, when, when I had the other accident. The one that really set me down. Oh, uh, let's see, Victor was born in 2000... 2012? It was between 2011 and 2012, yeah. Okay, 2011 and 2012. It was cold out, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say November, December, January, it was in that time frame. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, Victor wasn't old at all. No, Victor, was, Victor was a baby small. baby. I uh, developed a small pimple, I guess, like, um, on my inner thigh. And we couldn't, I, for about a week, I guess, it, it was sore. And it developed and got to about the size of a 50 cent piece, roughly. And I, I felt horrible. I was sick. I didn't feel good. I went to a, one of those uh, 24 hour emergency health clinics. And um, basically, I, at, at the time I had no vehicle. I had no car at all. Perfect timing. Just ideal timing. So I called a friend of mine to, to take me to this health clinic. And they took me up, no problem. I'm up there, and the woman that I saw wanted to lance it immediately. She's like, um, we just want to lance it and drain it and put you on some antivirus. I said, okay, well, the last time I had something like this, because it was the identical spot. The last time I had something like this, we just took some strong antibiotics, and, and it went away. She goes, well, we can try that. I said, okay. Dodge the knife again. Take the antibiotics and go home and... Ate the antibiotics like I was supposed to. Two days go by and I'm not feeling much better. And then I went to bed. And I woke up. And this part's a little on the graphic side, guys. So, I mean, I'm not going to show you anything. But I'm going to explain it in great detail. I woke up with a lump on the side of my leg that went into my groin that was that big. And it hurt. It was on fire. It was hot. It was sore. It looked like someone literally took a, a softball and stuffed it up under my skin. I, I'm, I'm yelling for Amy that morning. And I'm like, Amy? Amy? She's like, whoa, oh my God. And I was like, yeah, what is it? And she was like, well, you, you got to go see someone about this. And I'm like, well, I just got on the antibiotics. And you know how sometimes infections will get really gnarly before they start going away? Well, that's what I thought was happening. So, I was like, Amy, I'm just going to stay here. Let me get some more sleep. If I get up and it's still sore and nasty, I'll go to the hospital because I'm really sick. And she's like, okay. I woke up and there was no pain. There was no nothing. I mean, it was still hot. It was still red. It was the same size, so it hadn't grown anymore. And I was like, sweet, the antibiotics catching up to it. We're almost done. Now, lo and behold, that wasn't the case. I woke up from a short nap, maybe an hour and a half nap, I guess. And that sucker had doubled in size into my groin. Big time this time. 
and it was about the size of a volleyball. Well, at that point in time, and I'm a tough dude, man, I can handle some pain. At that point in time, I looked at him and I said, call a cab, I gotta go to the doctor. You sure you don't want to call me an ambulance? No, we're not calling an ambulance. Call a cab, I need to get the doctor. So she calls cab company. I went to stand up and my legs collapsed out from underneath me, literally. Like I just didn't have any legs. There was no locking mechanism in my kneecap at all. So I got up off the floor with, with some help. Now, mind you, I wasn't as big as I am now. I was big, but not this big. Um, went to the hospital. Or, or no, hold on, let me back up. Called the ambulance. <coughs> <coughs> ambulance came. Took me to the hospital. The looks on the EMT's face when I showed him was just like, oh, wow, yeah. Let's get you to the hospital. So I get into the hospital and the doctor, I hadn't heard anything yet. The doctor came in and saw me, looked at it. Gave me some pain pills because, I mean, it was... Uh, set your crotch on fire once you understand. Um, it was bad. It was bad. Um, didn't hear anything and I was starving. Pain pills had kicked in. I, you know, it, it had dropped my fever and stopped the aches, so I'm hungry. I ain't eaten in like two days. Amy, go get me a hamburger or something, please. She's like, okay. She goes up to the cafeteria, grabs me a, a hospital cafeteria hamburger, and I'm telling you, it, it was the best thing I'd tasted in a month, it seemed like. I get about half of this nasty hospital burger down, and uh, the doctor comes in and says, what are you doing? I said, I'm eating. He's like, you can't. And I said, oh, I assure you I can. I took a big bite out of the hamburger. And uh, he goes, you, you can't eat. You're going into surgery. And I was like, okay. Now, I hadn't heard anything about this. So, I said, surgery? And he goes, no one's talked to you? And I said, no. So, he comes in the room and shuts the door and says, we called the surgeon. He turned around in the middle of the freeway. And is on his way back right now. You're going into surgery within the next hour. Said, okay, why am I going into surgery? Because you don't know how sick you are, do you? Said, no, I don't. No one's told me anything. The doctor looked at me straight face and said, ten hours. And I looked at him kind of funny. He said, ten hours? What the hell does that mean? Ten hours, and I'd be talking to a corpse. Oh, okay, so here's the hamburger, and uh, waited, went into surgery, they cut me open and drained, we're, we're just going to say copious amounts of fluid and infection and liquid me, basically, and that was only the first shot. They luckily let me go up to the hotel room, or hotel room, <laughs> hospital room. It was such a hotel. Yeah, it was a great hotel. Um, they, give, they give you all sorts of drugs. <laughs> um, they, they took me up, basically, and let me rest for a day. And then I was back into surgery the next day. So they had two bouts of this to make sure they got it all. And then it was massive antibiotics and... I had a nine-day hospital stay and another 15 days on my back at home. Got everything healed up. Infection's gone. I'm doing great. All of a sudden, I mean, I had to kind of learn how to rewalk for a little bit because now I have this growth that, that hangs over my uh, my waist from the infection actually and it's just it's called a lipoma if anybody's into information like that so anyway, um, anyway it's a lipoma it can be removed I'm just waiting to lose weight before I remove it because if you don't lose the weight before you remove it it has a chance to grow back 
So, I had to learn how to rewalk, and my leg wasn't functioning correctly at all. Like, it would spasm, fold up underneath me, and I'd be on the ground. And it was several months like that before I said, something's wrong, Amy. i, I got to go get this checked out. Well, I went back to the neurologist, and the, neuro the, the neurologist said, there's no need to, to do tests. I said, why? I said, well, it's here in your file that they had to sever a nerve bundle to save your life. Okay, well, can we fix it? He goes, well, we can try, but there, there's a slim to, slim to zero chance that it's going to work anyway. Great. So now my leg's all messed up. I mean, it was messed up before, but it's really messed up now. So fast forward another 10 years, and this is what you get. Can't really walk, so I'm pretty well bound in a wheelchair most of the time, and will be for the rest of my life. Um, there's not a whole lot I can do shy of amputating the leg and getting a fake one put on that's going to let me run, walk, and jump like I used to. The, the good news about it is I don't need the mobility to lose the weight. It's just going to take me a little longer to, to get the results I want. i got to be strict about it. So that's how Will became 500 pounds. Um... It was a long journey getting here. And it's going to be a long journey getting out of here. But, I, I've got to put the work into it to get the result. I've, I've suffered with, um, with massive depression throughout this whole thing. I used to be a very, I'm not going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to say I was the most chipper person in the world, but I was a pretty positive thinking person and, and pretty positive person most of the time. Um, I've got a friend of mine that would swear up and down that, that uh, she was the most positive person in the world and I love her to death. We need to get a hold of her, Amy. Okay. And, uh, it's just one of those things where I hated, I, and I know hate's a strong word, but I'm going to use it because that's how I felt. I hated the situation that I'd put myself in. I hated everybody around me for letting me get myself into that situation. I hated... All the doctors for not helping me more than they did. And I hated all my friends for just sitting back and watching it happen. Fast forward ten years of absolute hatred and negative feelings. And not, I mean, I still did good things for people. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a complete idiot. But, uh. It wasn't to the point where I was, you know. I mean, I used to be a very positive person doing a lot of things. Fast forward till this year when I ran a drive to put um, baskets together for the homeless. Didn't go as well as I planned it to go, but I got some of them out there, and that's what mattered. It, it showed my old self again and I, I felt good I didn't feel good I didn't feel physically good I felt emotionally good I felt mentally good and I missed that part of me so I started looking into things and why was I so angry why was I so upset all the time And I, I wasn't angry at my friends. I was blaming my friends because I, I was afraid to point the finger at the real blame. I was afraid to, to look at myself in the mirror and go, Why did you let yourself get this way? 
And that's what it was. I allowed it. I didn't watch what I was doing. I didn't make the right choices. And I let it get out of hand. So, for everybody... Everybody that I ever badmouth about why I am the way I am, I, I apologize. I'm this way because I did it. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not going to allow myself to be this person. So, that was, that was like I said, Thanksgiving-ish. Maybe a little before that I decided that. And it's been a hard work to, to get past all that. And, and you have to watch yourself because after years of, of blaming the hospital or blaming a doctor or whatever. And you can't do that anymore. The doctor saved my life. The hospital let me heal. I'm the one that let it get out of control. So, that's that part of my story, guys. And, for better or for worse, I'm going to contend with it, and I'll own it. But I wanted a record of how serious, I guess, and what it takes to fix yourself after years and years and years of being messed up. I mean, you know, everybody's got their own story and I know that. I want this video, like I said at the beginning, maybe to inspire somebody else to do it. That's fine. I want it more to remind myself on what, I, what I've done. So I can look back and go, you know what? I've improved leaps and bounds for myself and my kids. I'd say my friends, but love you guys that do, all of you. But at the same time, this is something I'm doing for me. But look on the bright side. If it works, you get this a-hole to contend with for a longer period of time. <laughs> so, I'm going to shut off part two right there. You guys enjoy yourselves and uh, be healthy, be happy. See you later.